I'm Pat O'Hare, Editor-in-Chief of Briefing.com's Investor Service. In this Learning Center segment, we will be discussing the price-to-sales ratio. The price-to-sales ratio can be computed by taking a company's market capitalization, which is the stock price multiplied by shares outstanding, and dividing it by total revenues for the last 12 months. It is a valuation metric that shows what an investor is paying for each dollar of sales. This particular metric is most useful when looking at companies that don't have any earnings, but it is not a perfect valuation measure on its own given that it does not take into account other factors such as a company's debt or its expenses. Nonetheless, it still serves as a practical valuation measure for all companies when making peer comparisons. In addition, since sales are harder to manipulate than earnings, the price to sales ratio is viewed by many to be a better valuation metric than the P-E ratio. All else equal, a price to sales ratio below one suggests there is a value proposition at the current stock price. As we always remind readers though, you can't look at just one number in isolation to make a definitive value assessment. For example, if company A has a price to sales ratio of 0.8 but has lower profit margins and a higher debt load than company B, which has a price to sales ratio of 0.5, company A can still be considered as overpriced using the price to sales ratio. It is important to keep in mind, too, that when using the price to sales ratio, you need to confine your comparisons to companies in the same industry. To that end, it is a mistake to compare the price to sales ratio for Walmart to the price to sales ratio for Caterpillar. That wraps up this Learning Center segment. Thanks for listening.